leading the church. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray that your faith have failed you not. I pray that you know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is closer than he ever have been, even than when we first believed. And I pray that you know he's coming soon. And I pray that you know he's a faithful God. He's returning soon. And he sits on the throne in heaven. On the circle of the earth. Watching everything moving. And waiting for everything to stand before him. Church, let us remember. It's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end times to get here. Because the end is now. Yes, beloved. We're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, it's good to gather with you again. I pray all is well with you and your families. Most importantly, I pray that your faith is increasing in our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And I pray that the grace that he have given us is causing us to bear fruit that will up in eternal life. Um, I pray that, you know, in all things, in all circumstances, um, that Christ Jesus is our solution and he is our strength. For when we are weak, yet we are at our strongest point, our strongest, we are at our strongest and our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, church, I have a word for you today. Um, it's a heavy word, but it's needed, but it's needed. Um, uh, but before we get into the word today, let's pray and reverence the Lord so he can put our heart into a place that it needs to be in to receive all that he has to give to us. Okay. Church, let's pray. Dear Heavenly and Wise Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us of our sins, Lord. Please draw near to us, Lord. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would have his way. That he would magnify the name of Jesus in us and in this word that you're going to give us right now, Lord. pray, Lord, that this word that you give today, Lord, would increase us in you, chain us to your presence, refocus us on what matters, and cause us to honor you by bearing the gospel that you died for, Lord Jesus, God Almighty. You paid for it, God, with your own blood. And we pray that we live righteously, that we appreciate your sacrifice, Lord. Forgive us of our sin, Lord. Forgive us of our rebellion, Lord. Forgive us of every area that we have bruised your heart. Because in all things, the only thing you ever did was show us kindness, mercy. And yet, in many ways, we rejected your kindness, Lord, by disobeying the gospel. Lord, help us, Lord, today, Lord. Free us today and deceit, this deceitfulness of this flesh, Lord. That we may live by the Spirit, that we 
may not gratify the desires of the flesh, Lord. And that we will live by your spirit because we want to glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord fill us up today. Fill us with your watchings today, Lord. That we may exalt you. That we may love you deeply. And seek you among all things. We love you so much, Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word. Brothers and sisters, um, there's a lot of things happening around us. And there's a lot of things that happen around us that can change us. But the truth of the matter is there's only one thing that can transform us. That leads us into everlasting life. And that only thing that can transform us. That causes us to pass from death to life. To enter eternal life and eternal rest. Is the gospel. Of the kingdom of God. Through the revelation of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Okay. For through Christ Jesus. We received an inheritance that we could not pay for. Okay. And whenever, just to give an example, whenever someone can't purchase a vehicle or they can't purchase their house because they got bad credit, then they have to get someone with a better credit to purchase that house or a vehicle for them. Well, man had bad credit with God because man sinned. So because man had bad credit, someone had to come with good credit to agree to sign on that dotted line so we can enter the new heaven, the new earth, that we can enter the presence of God forever. Oh, man. And that one who had good credit with God because he is God, is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And because he had good credit, he purchased salvation that we could not pay for. And as he purchased that salvation that we could not pay for, it gave us a vehicle to get to heaven. And that vehicle to get to heaven is the gospel that transforms us by his righteousness. And that place that this vehicle takes us to is the kingdom of heaven, which is an eternal kingdom that requires and eternal righteousness and that, 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 that requires a perfect righteousness. And that perfect righteousness is Christ, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as we consider that Christ Jesus purchased this inheritance. Then we get a greater understanding that Christ Jesus is worthy of pay. Christ Jesus is worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. That Christ Jesus paid for this inheritance by washing us from our sins with his own with his own blood. Jesus, he paid for this inheritance, which is salvation and uh, through paid for. He paid for um, our uh, he paid for this inheritance with his own blood and that blood washed us from our own sins. 
and through salvation we can enter God home, which is a eternal queen. We can enter God home, which is an eternal kingdom, and a eternal kingdom requires eternal life. Because if you don't got eternal life, you can't enter an eternal kingdom because the eternal kingdom is living and no death can enter it. Jesus, man. So in God love, he paid for it with his own blood that he may wash us with his own blood. That he may wash us from our sins with his own blood. So what do we say, church? We say, we, we say, children of God. This What do we say, children of God? The Lord says, we say, let us live by salvation through obeying the gospel that we may receive our inherit inheritance that Christ Jesus paid for by washing us from our sin by his own blood. Therefore, let us finish the race by the grace of God and a loving Savior. And he is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Mm -mm -mm. And as we consider this, then it greatly magnifies the love of God and the grace of God. But also the holiness and righteousness of God that every man is held to that standard, which is the gospel. And the only way to enter that eternal kingdom is through the gospel. And if man don't obey that gospel, he can't see life. Because he did not believe in God one and only son. In which the kingdom come through. Okay. Man, that's tough, man. And as the Lord began to minister this. Men of this to, to me and speak this to me. He said, son, through my salvation. Y'all reflect light, son. That through y'all, through salvation, y'all are the light of the world. Jesus. Through salvation, y'all live in me and y'all and, and, and as y'all live in me, y'all get an understanding that I am the light of the world, says the Lord Jesus. And as I'm the light of the world, because I'm in you, in y'all, y'all supposed to reflect that light in the world that comes from me. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. And as he said that. As we the light of the world, he says, son, y'all are the salt in this world. That y'all supposed to walk righteously through the grace that I given you, leaving the flavor of righteousness everywhere you go through the grace that I have given you. Mm. For this, he said, for the works of this world is evil and bland and corrupt by the stain of sin. But as y'all walk and the light that is in me, the salt that y'all have, flavor every place that y'all walk with my righteousness, that those me that see my righteousness may see me and come to my feet because y'all are lifting up my name. Not only by your lips, but by the way you live according to my testimony. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. And as the Lord broke that down that we are the light of the world and that we are the salt of the, that we're the salt in this world he said let us walk righteously in holiness and righteousness through obeying the gospel by my spirit that you may lose that you may not lose your saltiness because if you lose your saltiness then it's do good for nothing to be trampled upon in the feet he said son y'all need he said son y'all obey my gospel that y'all may not tr that that y'all won't trample up the, on the feet my testimony because when you disobey the gospel you trample on the feet my testimony but when you obey the gospel you glorify my testimony because you show that I am alive in you for no man can bear fruit on his own the only way he can bear fruit is in me and as he live in me. He sprinkles salt everywhere he go because I am the light of the world. They give the salt to every believer to sprinkle everywhere they go because I am their foundation. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. And the Lord said, whoever walk this way and practice this, not only preach it, preach it, but whoever practice this shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever practice what they preach shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. What do you mean, Lord? Whoever live by the word that I give him will be the man that founded his house on the rock. 
and as he practiced what he preached, then the testimony which is me that is his rock will prune him and lead him to lead him into lead him into everlasting life into the kingdom of God. Because he was founded upon the strong foundation. Jesus, man. Because he was found on a strong foundation. And if he is found on a strong foundation, that means and testify that he practiced what he preached. Oh, man. If you are built in me and if you are enduring in me, then you are practice what you're preaching because my spirit teach you not only to speak my word, but to live by my word. Jesus, man. And he said, if you practice what you preach, then you shall be great in the hem- You shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because as you practice what you preach, it teaches you how to be humble. As you practice what you preach, it teaches you how to be humble in what you heard and not prideful in what you heard. Because as you practice what you preach, it teaches you that I'm doing the work and not you. And that it teaches you that I'm doing the work, not you. Then in humility, you you submit yourself to my spirit. And that you submit yourself to my spirit, you sit at my feet like, Daddy, I need you. Jesus. And as you get a revelation that you need me, I exalt you because you are poor in spirit. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And he said, blessed are those that are poor in spirit. Blessed are those that are pure in heart. For those that are poor in spirit are pure in heart because they cling to me for their life. And as they cling to me for their life, they know I am their true hope. And as they know I'm their true hope, they know that I am their true love. And as they know that I'm their true love, then in me is their love. And in me, I teach them about love. And in me, they remain in that love. And in me, I sanctify them by my love, which is my righteousness. That is love through my father in heaven that shows that you are one in us and we are in you through salvation and the gospel that I died for. Jesus man Jesus man Jesus man Says the Lord God Almighty Jesus man That's heavy man That's heavy man That's heavy man Jesus man Says the Lord God Almighty Jesus man Serious account man So what do we say church we said, let us return to our first love and endure in our first love by abandoning the gospel. For where a man's heart is, his treasure will be also. Okay. Where a man's heart is, his treasure is, his treasure will be also. Okay. For Jesus said, you have heard what it said and right here jesus is talking about um he said right he said where his treasure is a man's heart will be also so right here jesus is dealing with the matter of the heart okay so let us treasure jesus because our heart with jesus oh man jesus it's heavy man and as we treasure jesus because our heart with jesus then the foundation of the glory of God is revealed even more by his spirit because we long for his presence. Jesus, Jesus, man. Jesus, man. Okay. Very serious account, brother and sister. And Jesus said, you have heard that it said, whoever looks after a woman and lusts in his heart, he have already committed adultery. And he said, you have heard that it said, and he said, you have heard that it, he said, and you have heard that it, um, you have heard that it said, and I for not. Jesus said, I tell you, pray for those, pray for your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. And in doing so, you will reap, you will reap hot burning coals on his head. Jesus, man. Jesus was going on teaching by he was telling them that you heard, I know you heard it this way, but I'm going to tell you this way. I know you heard it this way, but let me tell you this way. Now notice, notice what the Lord said. He said, you have heard that it said, 
an eye for an eye. But I tell you, pray for your enemies and those who persecute you. Oh, you have heard that it said, you have heard that it said, uh, um, uh, do not commit, he said, uh, uh, do not commit a dirt. And Jesus, Jesus would go on forth and say, uh, um, give me one second, church. He said, you ever heard that it said, that it said, One second, brother and sister. Matthew 5, 27. Man, it was heavy. The Lord said, and you have heard that it said. Here you go. He said, he said, let's go. Let's go to verse. Um, let's go to. Uh, let's go to. Um, verse 27, 5, 27. It said, you have heard that it said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, everyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Oh, man. See, Jesus would tell them, he would talk, they, he was addressing them, say, you have heard they say, don't commit adultery, but he's talking to them. He He's speaking about the physical, but then Jesus go even further about the spiritual backdrop. He said, you heard that it said, don't commit adultery. But I tell you, if you even look and a woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. So Jesus not only did it with the physical part, but he was talking about the matter of the heart spiritually. Oh man, why? Because the Father seeks those that worship in truth and in spirit. Now, now, so what can we pair this to, church? The Lord said the works of this world is evil, and he wants us to live for God and not this world. Well, we can compare this woman, this world to an adulterous woman. Oh man. Okay. And as we look at this world, Jesus said, if if you even look at a woman, if you even look at a woman and you lust at her, then you have already committed adultery in your heart. Brother and sister, let us not lust and long. See, all that is in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Brother and sister, let us not be deceived by what we see. And fall into a place of lust and, and spiritual adultery by desiring this world from a place of worship in our hearts. But rather, let us look to God where our help comes from and long to be in his presence because he is the truth. Jesus, man. Jesus, have, you have heard that it said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, everyone who looks at a woman to lust have already committed adultery in his heart. Brother and sister, um, adultery not uh, adultery does not only um, compare to a man and woman if they uh, commit infidelity, but if we conform to this world, then we commit infidelity against God. If we conform to this world, then we commit spiritual adultery to God. So right here, Jesus is addressing the spiritual right here, the matter of the heart right here in a man. He said, if you even look, you have a lust at the woman, then you have already committed adultery in your heart. Church, let us not lust after this world and commit adultery in our heart towards God. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. And look what he said. He said, look, for it's better that you lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go in hell. Oh, man. So, what is the Lord saying? It is best for you to lose everything. If It is best for you to lose everything in this life that will cause you to sin versus to be. It is best for you to lose anything. It is it, it, this wasn't. It would be best for you to lose everything in this life if it means you to go into if it means you going to the kingdom of God versus grabbing everything in this life that calls you to lust and be thrown into the fire. Jesus, man, Jesus, man, it's a very serious account, man. So what are you saying? If if things around you is 
It's things around you. It's calling you, causing you to lust after this world. It's things that plays in your mind, that plays in your heart, that causing you to reject the spirit of God. It is best to give that away and walk in righteousness that you may pursue God and not the things of this world. Okay. I remember waking up in a vision and this man had his last hundred dollars in the vision. And it was people move. It was traffic moving back and forth through the street. So the man took off his shoes, walked up the street. And when he get up the street, he helping people move furniture in his house. But he, this man took his last hundred dollars to pay for this furniture because it was just, it was that, it was just that valuable. And the Lord Jesus said, it, it, he spoke about in scripture that a man so loudly, it, it best for he spoke about, I can't remember the exact parable, he spoke about a man selling all his hat, selling all he have to purchase that which come from the kingdom, what he was explaining. Oh. Church, this vision is about a man giving away all his giving away all he have to retrieve that true furniture, that true valuable furniture. Oh man. That valuable furniture in this vision is the gospel that leads us into everlasting life in the kingdom of God. Jesus, it is best for us to give away all things in this world that we may inherit eternal life. It is best for us to die to this flesh daily. It's best for us to die to this flesh daily. Do not be attached to nothing in this world. Be attached to the presence of God that we may finish this race that he have called us to through the salvation of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Okay. For the Lord said, you have heard that it's said, but the Lord said, I tell you, obey the gospel. You have heard that it's said that the things of this world may, you, you have heard that it's said that the things in this world are good for you. But the Lord said, but I tell you, but the things of this world is evil and lead to eternal damnation. The Lord said, you have heard that it's said. You have heard that it's said. That the things of this world. May feel might may may feel you up. But the Lord said, but I tell you that the things of this world is empty. And the righteousness that come through me. Is everlasting life. Oh, man. Jesus. The Lord said, you may heard that it said the Lord said you have heard that it said. That you can live in the way you want to live. But the Lord said, I tell you. That if a man don't obey the gospel and do my father will. Then he's not my child. Oh, man. Jesus, man. The serious account, man. The serious account, man. The serious account, man. It should not be taken lightly. Okay. Very serious account, brothers and sisters. Very serious account. Okay. And. And brothers and sisters. As we contemplate this. And as. We understand this. Let us take serious our salvation. Because Christ Jesus is coming soon. Okay. I was outside sitting on a porch the other day. And. um, And I'm sitting outside. And it began to rain and it began to rain. The wind blowing rain. I'm trying to study, read the word outside on the, uh, on my little balcony. The rain, blow, the rain blowing, uh, started, the, the drizzle started hitting my Bible. I'm trying to move, dodge the rain, dodge the rain. And then no matter what I tried to move or dodge it sitting on the balcony, I still got wet. Man. Oh, man. in order for me to not get wet and not to get hit by the rain. I had to go in the house. Oh, man. The Lord spoke to me, even speaking right now. The Lord said, son, so as this rain, so as you try to dodge and do all of these things to keep forgetting rained on. And the only way for you not to get rained on was to go into the house. He said, son, like so. In the hour, and he said, like so in this hour and my great. And he said, like so in the hour that you are in now. He said, son, when I come. He said, son, the, the, the four winds are blowing on the earth, son. And he said, when I come, I will be just like that rain. I will be blowing. 
and I will, I will be, I will be, he said, I will be blowing and notice son, how you tried to dodge that rain, but you could not dodge. He said, son, when I come, people going to be trying to dodge me. They're going to be trying to hide. They'll be trying to go every other place to keep for getting hit by this rain, to keep from experiencing my wrath. But he said, son, they won't be able to hide in the world. He said, son, like you was not able to hide from the rain when you was outside on the balcony. Like so when I come, people won't be able to hide from my wrath. Oh, man. He said, son, the, the same way you went in the house to escape the rain. Like so, the only way they will be able to escape my wrath that is greater than rain is the only the only way to escape it is to be in my house. Jesus, man. And that house is my salvation. Oh, man. Jesus. What do we say, church? Man, let us obey the gospel. Okay. And then, and then, um, then, uh, as I came back from shopping one day and I was talking to my little girl on the phone and we in two different time zones because I'm in Texas, she in Georgia. And then she said, daddy, is it night where y'all at? I said, no, baby, it's still kind of daytime where I'm at. She's like, Dad, that's not right. That's not fair. It's dark where I'm at, but it's, it's, I'm, it's dark where I'm at, but it, it's light where you at, Dad. That's not fair. I said, well, baby, we're in two different time zones. And the Lord began to speak to me. The Lord began to speak to me so heavy, man, because I, I laid, I then responded to my daughter. I said, baby, I said, baby, uh, yeah, I said, and I said, baby, yeah, we're in two different time zones. Um, but it's, 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 it's bright. It's day where I'm at now, but, uh, time is running out. It's going to get ready to get night soon. Oh man. The Lord spoke to me. So him, he said, son, like, so with the conversation you just had with your daughter about the time zone and the hour, your, and the hours, he said, son, like, so with the hour y'all are in now. He said, son, time is running out. Time is far. He said, son, he said, like so with the hour y'all, like so is the like so in the hour y'all are in now. Time is running out. Night is coming. The great day of the Lord is at hand. What do we say, church? Let us be sober and, and be vigilant through the obedience of the gospel by living according to his grace, grace by true faith, by the Holy Spirit. That we may be awake when he return and he won't see our shame and our nakedness. Oh, man. Why? Because his righteousness covers us from our own sin. His righteousness watches us, washes us from our own sin that we be blamed, that we may be blameless in sight of God. Jesus, man. It's a serious account, man. And as we get a revelation of that church and as we understand that church, let us magnify and glorify the name of God who is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, okay? And as we get a revelation of this church, let us walk in confidence that we was built on the rock and that rock is Christ Jesus. The church is built on that rock and that rock is Christ Jesus and the gates of hell will not prevail against it because Christ Jesus is victorious. So church, because he is victorious, victorious we, will victor we will be victorious in him, Jesus. Okay. And as I contemplate that, it reminds me of what the Lord said the other day. As because I got injured on my job and I cut my hand, and as I was sitting in on a doctor bed, I'm sitting there waiting on a doctor to come in. And then I began to look at this great skeleton image picture on the wall. And as I began to look at the picture on the wall, I see how intelligent the physical body is. Oh, man. How the ligaments and everything just put so intelligent and play intelligently in place. And I began to be amazed and at awe at the artistic work and the artwork and the hands of God and how beautiful his creation is and how awesome he is. And, and even right now, um, making me crave to want to be with him right now because he's so awesome. And as I contemplate the picture. He began to speak to me. He said, son, you see how intelligent, intelligent that body is, son? Yes, daddy. Do you see how intelligent I made that and how great that physical portion of my creation I created? Yes, daddy. He said, son, if the physical body is, is, is intelligent, what I created, how much, 
How much more is the spiritual body I created through the righteousness of my son, Christ Jesus? Oh, man. And that spiritual body, church, is us. Oh, man, because Christ Jesus went to the throne in heaven and he created us a spiritual body to represent his glory in the earth. So if the physical body is intelligent, how much more is the Holy Spirit that is in this church that God have created uh, that God had created through the righteousness of Christ Jesus? Our Lord and Savior. And as the physical body is created, is, is intelligent, how much more? It's the spiritual body because the spiritual body better image of God. Jesus. Jesus. Church. Let me repeat that. If the physical body that God created is intelligent, how much more is the spiritual body that was created that bear God image? Oh, man. God is so intelligent. Jesus, man. He is so amazing. How in the beginning, God said, I blew my breath in man. I put my spirit in man and he bore my image. Oh, man. And then we get to the New Testament when man died spiritually. He brought them back spiritually by giving him by giving them their image back. Oh, man. The true image of God. And that image is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That. In Christ's identity, we are restored back to our rightful place in him. Jesus, man. So if the physical body is intelligent, how much more is the spiritual body, church, that God made us in through the righteousness of Christ Jesus? Because Christ Jesus is the righteousness of God. Jesus and through him we have we find our true identity because we live in him through his righteousness and through his righteousness it's the true perfection in the image of God Jesus. Jesus what do we say church let us obey the gospel that we may be transformed by his righteousness and as we walk by his spirit we are renewed daily and as we are renewed daily, we become more like him. And as we become more like him, we satisfy the standard of God because he satisfied it according to the will of God. Why? Because he is the author of life. And so as he blew breath in Adam, so when we be reborn again, he blew breath into us that we may be back in our rightful place in him. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. Serious account, brothers and sisters. Serious account. Brothers and sisters, let us take a break. Let us take a break. And we'll be right back out of this. Church, I pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it keep you and I pray that it leads you into everlasting life. Church, will you be fit to enter the kingdom of heaven? Will I be fit to enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, that depends, brothers and sisters, if we obey the gospel. True statement, church. It should be received with full acceptance.
Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, welcome to Revelation Live. Welcome to Revelation Live. Come alive from the book of Revelation. Um, come alive from the book of Revelation. And the Lord told his church, blessed is the man who read it and keep the word of this prophecy. Well, church, baby, we're going to we're going to we're going to keep the words of this prophecy. That we may be blessed. Through his righteousness and the revelation of his glory and be prepared for his return because the book of Revelation prepares for the return of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus by teaching us to obey the gospel. So we're going to get into it first. I'm going to give you a little. Um. um Give you a few updates, okay? And brothers and sisters, let's be in prayer for the the people that have been going through all of these um, shootings at Walmart and stuff like that, man, and uh, the disasters and stuff that is going on, church. Let us be in prayer for them, okay? Matter of fact, let's pray real quick. Um, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray for those who have lost lives, Lord. At every area that have been um, shot, um, that have had a mass shooting, Lord. And we pray for the hurricanes, Lord. We pray for the people that have experienced hurricane and loss, Lord. We just pray that some knew you, Lord. Jesus, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that, that they be comforted, Lord. That your presence would meet them, Lord. And that it would even bring those that made it through um, close to you, Lord, by knowing that. Um, tomorrow is not promised, Lord. And we just pray for their, their, we just pray for them, Lord, their strength, Lord, and, and a comfort for their families, Lord. We pray that we get a revelation of you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' first name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, yeah, brothers and sisters. Um, the very serious stuff that is going on right now. The, the earth is groaning, man, because the second coming of Christ Jesus is coming, okay? Very serious account, brothers and sisters. So let me give you an update. You know, you got some places right now are, you know, um, looking at articles and stuff like that, wanting that some people should get their kids out of public school, you know, in some places, you know, um, just simply because um, some of the stuff that is going on with LGBT and different stuff like that. I'm not saying that what I'm just, I'm not saying that uh, what, um, what everybody should do. Just these just certain articles. Okay. Um, but what I do want to key in on, what I do want to key in on, um, um, uh, brothers and sisters, um, is that um, it's a lot of things that are shaking all around us, okay? It's a lot of things that um, um shake, shake, shaking around us, okay? And and, it, and it's giving a revelation that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is near, okay? And I know I say this a lot, brothers and sisters, but uh, we are living in a time where it's all about one world government, brothers and sisters. That is all it's about right now, brothers and sisters. And um, we have to be in obedient in the gospel and we have to be aware of uh, what is going on. OK, the climate change and everything that is going on. So like we were speaking earlier, you got, you got some people want to remove their kids out of school just simply because of so much going on in school. You got some people trying to do that. I'm, and I'm just sharing this stuff with you in regards to what is going on and what is going on in the earth, okay? And you got some people and you got so much things going on and it testifies that the second coming of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is near. But the question is, is a lot of this stuff is happening and because and, and 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 through all of it that is happening, uh, people of the one world government will use all the chaos to push an evil agenda. Okay, and this is a very serious account, brothers and sisters, because we have to know and understand that we are church. We are that last generation. Okay, we are that last church. We are every church right now that is preaching this truth. We are a end time church. We are a church with the last baton to carry across the finish line before Christ Jesus come. That we are that last generation. 
Okay. We are that last generation before the return of Jesus. Okay. And in this last generation, we are in a time that it is all about one world government. Right now, we're in a time where you're either going to worship one world government or you're either going to worship Jesus. Okay. In church, we must worship Jesus because everything that worship this world, this one world government will be lost forever in a lake of fire. Okay. Okay. Now, um, as I was spending time with the Lord today, the Lord began to reveal something to me because the Lord began to show me many things. Uh, he began to show me a lot of heavy things in regard to the book of Revelation um, that uh, give, that give revelation about the book of Revelation in Scripture. OK, OK. Now, uh, the one world government will have people to take a mark of the beast. The Antichrist will take over that one world government. And as he take over that one world government. He would have people, he would have people um, to take their mark and to worship that one world government. Okay. In the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar um, put up a statue. He put up a statue and he put up a statue and he put up a statue and, and he put up a statue and um whenever, whenever, um, whenever they um When, whenever they made a sound, whenever he took, whenever they played this sound, people had to fall down to worship this statue. Oh man! Good. Okay. See, he had became prideful and created a statue and made everybody worship it. Oh. And God said, "You will have no idols before me." Oh man! Okay, so. He began to create a, a, a statue that everybody began to worship. Okay. And during this time, it was like a during his time it was like a one world government. He was over a lot of things. Okay. And during this time, he created that statue and made everybody worship it. Okay. Well, the Lord was speaking to me today. And it's it's amazing how you can be walking with the Holy Spirit and natural things of light, doing natural things of things in life. He began to reveal to you what's to come. Oh man. Because as I'm walking with the Lord, as I'm walking with the Lord today, he began to speak to me. He said, son, so as it were in the time of Daniel King Nebuchadnezzar, so will it be today. The same way they they had a sound then to make people fall down to worship. The same way it will be a sound when the Antichrist come to make people fall down and worship. OK, there's going to come a time where where they're going to try to silence the truth and cut off the truth off screens off. They're going to try to, they're going to, they, it's the time coming where they will silence the truth. They will take the truth. They will censor the truth, take the truth, hide the truth from the TV screen and put that, which is false on the TV screen. It's a time coming where they will take that, take that. They're going to take the truth, silence the truth. They already doing it now. Censor the truth from the screen and put that, which is false on the screen. Okay. And there's going to be a time where you won't be able to buy or sell and they're going to have you. And, and there's going to be a sign. There, there's going to be a sound that happened. Like, for instance, whenever there's an amber alert, like, for instance, whenever there's an amber alert, amber alert, when somebody get abducted or somebody get kidnapped or there's a storm coming, you get this amber alert on your phone that says, and, and, and make the noise. It'll make the noise to make you look at your phone to see that um something is happening. Somebody got adopted or something, some a storm come, a flood warning to make you pay attention to your phone. OK. Or the TV. OK. Well, like so in the time to come. Uh, when the man of sin, when the man of sin come on the screen, there will be a sound that goes off and make everybody look at the screen and worship on that screen. Hear me, brother and sister. Hear me, brother and sister. So as it was in the times of King Nebuchadnezzar, so will it be in this hour that we are in. When the great tribulation begin, okay, they are already rolling this stuff out, man. It's already happening in the spirit. It's going to play out in the natural. The, the one world government is already consuming people. They are already indoctrinating people uh, uh, through schools, through your job. They are already setting everything up right now as we speak 
That's why we can't be attached to none of these things. And, and if we're not attached to Christ Jesus, and if we're attached to this world, brothers and sisters, when they issue the mark, then you will naturally give yourself away because you found hope in the things of this world. This world is not our true peace. This world is not our true hope. Our true hope is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So when this time come, brothers and sisters, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church of brothers and sisters. There will be a time coming where they will have a sound. They will have a sound where everybody will have to turn. They, they will have a sound where everybody will have to turn and watch a screen to worship the image of the beast. They will have to turn and watch a screen and worship the image of the beast. And if they don't worship their screen, then they can't get they they can't get their badge to enter society. Man. If they don't worship, if they don't worship their screen, then they can't get their badge to to operate in their system. Because that badge that they receive, that badge that they receive will be an image. That badge that they receive, that badge that they receive will will check them in the gate. And the badge, what they receive, will check them out of the gate. If they don't have that badge, they will not be able to get in. Before they do anything, they will have to watch their screen. They will have to watch their screen. And when they watch their screen, it allows for them to get a badge to operate in their system, to operate in their system. And once they get the badge to operate in their system, that badge will be um, at a security level um, instance where you're going to have to have this badge to, to check in. And you have to have this badge to check out. That is how the system of the beast. That is how the system of the beast gonna work. They, you gonna have to check it. You have to have that that badge that mark to check in, that mark to check out. Okay, so brothers and sisters, this is a very serious account. These things are coming. Then these things are coming the next few years. These things are coming the next few years, brothers and sisters. Hear me. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. I repeat this, brothers and sisters. The time to come. They will have a sound They will, they will have a sound where you have to turn and watch a screen. You have to turn and watch a screen. Once that sound go off, you have to turn and watch the screen. And once you watch the screen, then you'll be able to then you'll be able to go on about your business. And then you have to have a badge to clock in, to check yourself in and to, to check yourself out um, to operate in their system. Serious account, brother, and sister, serious account, brother, and sister. This one world government right now. It's behind the system of government, refining everything as we know it. And I'm not talking about refining in a good way. They're refining stuff in an evil way through the corruption and an evil agenda through the influence of Satan. OK, how do we escape it? We escape it by abandoning the gospel, by trusting that Christ Jesus, is our provider, provider. He is our hope because he have already provided us with salvation and his grace is sufficient. No matter if we have nothing in this life. OK. True statement, brother and sister. I had, uh, 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 I know it's a hard teaching, but brother and sister, I would do you a disservice if I did not speak. If the, if I would not allow the Holy Spirit to move freely and speak what He's been revealing, what is about to take place, brother and sister. These things are due to happen. Okay, soon, a few years away. Christ Jesus. See, we're not just gonna look. We're gonna be aware of what is going on, but we're not gonna fear what's going on because Jesus did not give us a spirit of fear. So we're gonna be aware of what's going on. But we, once we see this happening, we know that the second coming, all this stuff will lead to the second coming of Christ Jesus. He will overthrow all of this, and we're gonna reign with Him a thousand years and forevermore in the new heaven and new earth. And brother, sister, I seen that new heaven and new earth coming down from God out of heaven. It was pure gold transparent it was so beautiful it was so glorious over in that life it will the color was so glossy it looked like the color a uh, 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 melt on your hand jesus the color was so beautiful it was so wet look like the, the colors are get on your finger over here in this earth it looked faded to the uh uh it looked faded compared to the kingdom of heaven what do we say let us strive in obedience to the kingdom of heaven that we may inherit true riches and not the false riches that come from this world Okay, so brothers and sisters, let's take heed to this warning that the Holy Spirit have given us right now. Okay, now we finna move forward. Now we finna move forward. Now we finna move forward into the third seal today. We talked about the white horse, the first seal. We talked about we talked about the second horse, uh, which is the red horse. Now we're going to talk about now 
um, brother, sister, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the, uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the, uh, the black horse. Okay. We're going to talk about the black horse brothers, sisters, because it's, it's, it's a very serious account. Um, what is going on right now, brothers? Give me one second. Very serious account. What is going on right now, brothers and sisters? Very, very serious account. And we must be ready. We must be ready for all things, brother and sister. Give me one second. And we're going to, we're going to um, read what the book of Revelation say about um, this, this black horse, okay? Let's see what the Lord said about this black horse, okay? Revelation. Revelation, um... Okay. We'll go to Revelation chapter six. We'll go to Revelation Revelation chapter six verse five. It said, When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. He said, come. And I looked and there was a black horse. The horseman on it had a set of scales in the hand. Then I heard something like a voice among the four living creatures say a quarter wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. denarius. Don't do not hurt the oil. Do not harm. Do not hurt the oil and the wine. Oh, man. Now, this is a very serious account right now, brother. So this is a very serious account right now. Okay. Because right here, this black man, we talked about all the horses are spirit. So we talked about the white horseman, the ride on a white horse was a white spirit. Okay. We, uh, we talked about the, the ride on a red horse was a red spirit because the book of Zerah tells us that the horses are spirits. Okay. So the red horseman was a red spirit. Now we had the black horse, which is a black spirit. Okay. Okay. Now, notice that it said that. A quarter wheat for a Daenerys and three quarts of barley for a Daenerys, a Daenerys, but do not hurt the oil, the oil and the wine. Okay, so this is a this is a a heavy topic. Okay, so this black horse, from a political standpoint, we got a political back standpoint and 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 a uh, spiritual backdrop. Okay, the political st uh, standpoint is this black horse represent capitalism. Okay, capitalism. And inside of this black horse is trade, commerce. Now, now look how now look how they show a lot about the stock market and stuff now. Okay, so we're gonna talk about it now. We know the red horse inside of the red horse is communism, socialism, and stuff like that. Inside of this black horse, inside of the black, it's not the only thing that the black horse entails now. So I want you to know that it's not what the only thing the black horse. So we're gonna talk about the physical events, and then we'll talk about the spiritual backdrop. Okay, now. The black horse inside this black horse is uh, is capitalism. Now, for a period of time, this world have been drifting into a place of communism, socialism, and they're still at it right now. OK, now, when. When the Trump administration began, began to come in, you can see the rise of nationalism. Start to rise up and now we see that the, the, the rise of nationalism began to rise up in America. And you got this big clash in America between communism, which leads to social, I mean, socialism that leads to communism. And you got those that believe in nationalism, those that are nationalists, that are capitalists. OK, so you got this red horse and this black horse cl clashing at clashing. They're clashing politically. They're clashing going back and forth. But they're all doing the same thing, bringing forth judgment. Oh, man. They're all clashing at one time, but all of them clashing, bringing forth judgment. So the black horse is clashing with the red spirit. OK, and it's creating this great unrest. So the red horse is taking peace and it's clashing 
with, with cl- capitalism. Look at look at free trade. Look at look at look at the war between China and America. Look at free trade. Look at capitalism that is rising up. And best believe the one world government don't like it. You best believe that globalists don't like the rise of nationalism because they feel that it's a threat to their one world government agenda. Okay, so you can see this big clash between the black horse and the red horse. So when you see free trade all in the news, when you see the rise of free trade, when you look at when you see free trade, when they talk about free trade, free trade is also a form also included in a form of capitalism. OK. Free trade also. Free trade, you, you see the rise of free trade signifies the rise of capitalism. And as you see this capitalism rising, you can see the free trade is clashing with the socialist agenda, okay? And as they're as they're clashing, as we stated earlier, it's bringing forth judgment in the earth. So when you see brothers and sisters the rise of free trade and capitalism, and you see them always talking about every time I turn on the news now, they're talking about the stock market, how it's going up and how it's going down. And as we look back in the times of oh, how cheaper things were then and how how higher and expensive stuff is now okay so as we look at this black horse operating at at work in the earth we can see that rise of capitalism is crashing with socialism which is included in the red horse and capitalism included in the black horse and they're clashing at one time right now and as the more they clash the more it's gonna be chaos the more they clash, the more it's going to be chaos. Okay, brother and sister. Okay. And see. And notice, notice right now when you look in America, for instance, the, the, the new president and administration of America is like, man, trade need to be equal. Trade need to be balanced. Okay. It said trade need to be equal and trade need to be balanced. A great reason why the America in, in American administration now is at, at um, war with China over trades and goods. It's because they feel that they, the equation is unbalanced, that China has been robbing America for so many billions of dollars in their trade deal. And they wanted to be free. They wanted to be balanced. Well, when you look to Europe, this is because that black horse is op- operating too. It's rising up as well. You look in Europe, the the, uh, the American administration is saying that stuff that uh, Europe have been doing is not right in regards to trade. So they're trying to balance out the trade. Oh man, they you look at the 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 uh, the USD um uh, the, the 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 new deal that America tried to make with uh uh. Mexico and Canada. Okay. So to, to operate in a free trade, uh, 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 to operate in a free trade agreement to balance stuff out. That was not, that was not operating right. Okay. And as you look at them trying to balance stuff out, try to balance stuff out. You can see the book of revelation, even more prophesying of what God said would happen because he said in the book of revelation, in the book of Revelation, chapter six, verse five, it said that the third said, it said, I looked, there was a black horse. The horseman set on him, had a set of skills in his hand. Oh, man. And the set of skills, if you, the, the old, you see the skill, the set of skill is like a seesaw. It's like a, the old set of skill, like it's like you hold, it's like a balance and you put you put the weight on one side, it'll drop the other side. You put the weight on one side, it'll drop the other side. So you got he got scales in the hand. And them old school scales, they'll weigh up and down depending on how much weight is on one side. So you can see this black horse operating. You can see this black horse moving in the world, moving all around the world from Europe, 
uh, Canada, Mexico. You can see this black horse moving in the earth right now, clashing with communism because communism believe in wealth, 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 uh, distribute wealth redistribution where they take money and they would distribute wealth all around the world. But this black horse that is rising up wants stuff to be equal and to be balanced. So you got them clashing with one another, but because they clashed and they're going to buy them clashing, they're going to bring forth judgment. Mm, 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 mm. And so you, as you see this world right now, trying to balance trade, look at the black horse in the book of revelation. It said the rider on that black horse had a set, had a set of scales in his hand. He had a balanced scale in his hands. And as you read the book of Daniel, it talks about being weighed in the balance. Now we finna get to the spiritual backdrop in a minute. It talks about the skill me being weighed in the balance. Well, right now, these horses are clashing. And right now, countries are trying to weigh in the balance, trying to equal everything out. But it's going to clash. But it's going to clash severely it's going to clash severely because this world is drifting into a place of one world government okay okay so now we get an understanding that the black horse represents uh capitalism and you see the capitalism rising up you can see the free trade rising up and it's all coming from this place of this black horse this black spirit and because this black spirit this black horse is operating this world the the, the 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 you can see people are trying to balance out that which is not equal oh man jesus jesus man because this world is being weighed in the balance physically jesus man and this world is being weighed in the balance spiritually so now we got the political part of the events that is going on in earth right now let us go to the spiritual backdrop of what is going on right now okay brothers and sisters the earth is being weighed in the balance why because they have not loved the truth truth in this black horse spiritually the earth is being weighed in the balance so as we see the rider on this horse, this black horse in the book of Revelation 6 was sitting on a horse with balancing in hand. The other day when I fell into the spirit, the Lord showed me a man with a, the, the, more, the Lord showed me a, a, a huge man with a set of scales in his hand. He showed me a huge man with a set of scales in his hand. And he reminded me of the book of Revelation 6. The Lord says, son, the Lord says, son, this earth is being weighed in the balance. This earth is being weighed in the balance and find and, and have found wanting because they have not loved the truth. They have disobeyed the gospel gospel. And they have mocked me. They have mocked, they have, they have mocked, they have mocked me by disobeying the gospel. Oh man. Jesus, man. Let's get a good understanding of this. In the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel, uh, the Lord our God had some holy vessels. You know, see, he had some holy vessels um, that King Nebuchadnezzar had took from Jerusalem when he brought them into when he um, took them and brought them into exile for seventy years. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar was smart; he didn't touch these holy vessels. But his grandson, many years after him, became prideful became prideful one night and started drinking out of the cups god holy cups his holy vessels out of the temple oh man drinking them unto other gods oh man what did he do that for and as soon as soon as he drunk out of the cup a hand appeared out of nowhere and started writing on the wall man and as he started writing on the wall daniel came it came daniel came to reveal the writing on the wall oh man and as he began to reveal the writing on the wall the lord jesus started began to say that your kingdom the days of your kingdom 
is none number. Jesus. You have been weighed in the balance and found want, found want. This very night, your kingdom will be stripped from you. Oh, man. Well, like so with this black horse, this world have rejected the gospel, have mocked and rebelled against a holy God, have 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 abused his holy vessels. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in us, the Holy Spirit, it dwells in us. Our body is his temple. And we are a holy vessel of the Holy Spirit. And because you have and because this word have rejected the vessels of a holy God, this word have been found wanting and been weighed in the balance by a holy God. They are being weighed in the balance. The Lord says, son, as you seen that huge man. Holding skills like so. My huge hand is weighing this world in the balance because they have rebelled against me. And everybody that have not loved the truth by their own choice will be consumed by these horses. So, the, so in this black horse, Men is being weighed in a balance because they have not loved the truth. For they have loved idols. For they have loved, for they have loved idols. For this is the portion they have chose. And because this is the portion they have chose, then the them, they themselves would drink from the portion of that cup. Because that's the that's the cup they chose. Oh man. Mm -hmm. For they have love idols, and they have provoked a holy God who sits on the circle who sits upon the circle of the earth. Man, this is a, this is a serious account. Because not only did this black horse is weighing the scale, the scales in the balance physically, but through this black horse, men are being weighed in the balance of their heart. Men are being weighed in the balance of their heart. Okay. This is a very serious account. This is a very serious account, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, as I look to the sky and I seen a man with skins in the hands looking upon the earth. For this reason, the earth is being weighed in the balance. Because of their deeds, for they have rejected my righteousness, says the Lord God Almighty. God Almighty, those who have obeyed the gospel, heart will be sustained by the grace of the Lord God Almighty, and that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So, brother and sister, let us obey the gospel, that we may not be weighed in the balance. For this world is being weighed in the balance through the political side. But this world is also being weighed in the balance through the spiritual side. Okay? Because see, as you look, as you look at them both, peace will be removed by the red horse. Peace will be removed by the red horse by shaking the finances of this world. And people that are putting hope in their finances are going to try to balance the things of this world because they don't want to lose their wealth. Because their heart is still consumed by money, they're going to try to save their money. But Jesus said, whoever try to save their life will lose it. But whoever lose their life shall save it. So you got on one hand, pieces being removed because people are trying to but peace is being removed and this world is going to be shaken, shaking. The, the red horse is going to shake their fi finance. And then on the other hand, you got the black horse that is clashing, trying to balance finances. But here's the truth. W the, the red horse is um, removing the peace, going to shake the finances. And this black horse is clashing, trying to balance his finances. 
but they're still both. But either way, they're still putting the hope in their money because the black horse trying to save their money. The black horse is the black horse is moving and people are trying to save their money. But by them trying to save it, they still will lose their life because they're still putting the hope in them. They, they, they still putting the hope in the things of this world. So these black, so these horses are working simultaneously. Though they're, though they're, though they are clashing in different areas, they're moving simultaneously in judgment. Moving, moving simultaneously, simultaneously in judgment because men love darkness instead of light. So to repeat that, the red horse is removing peace, shaking finances through communism, shaking. Um, finance about removing peace through chaos. The black horse is moving, trying to balance, balance, trying to balance the equation, but it's clashing with the with the red horse, also causing unrest because it's because it's trying to save its money. But in reality, they're trying to save something that they're putting their hope in. But here's the thing, church: the only hope. Is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, because he is our provider. He is our source. He is our hope. So, brother and sister, let us not idolize. Let us not idolize trade. Let us not idolize money. Let us not idolize the thing of this world, because whoever try to save it, like this black horse, they're trying to balance the equation. Jesus said, whoever try to save their life will lose it. Whoever lose their life will save it. You know what? Whoever would give all for the gospel will be saved because my gospel is going to do forever. But whoever try to save, try to balance the equation, try to run and save their money, try to run and hide behind the things in this world will lose it because this world is perishing. So what do we say, church? Let us obey the gospel that we won't be shaken by these things that is going on right now. Okay. Very serious account, brother and sister. Very serious account. Okay. Brothers and sisters, that's all that I have for you today. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. And I pray that it lead you into righteousness and to everlasting life. Church, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We repent of our, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us of our sins, Lord. We pray that we please your heart. Lord, we pray that we would long for you. We pray that we would take serious your word, Lord. We pray that we would not push it to the side, Lord, like it does not matter, Lord. But we pray that we will take heed to every word that you are speaking, to, that you are speaking to us, that you are revealing to us, Lord, that we may be made ready by living in a band of gospel daily. And Lord, we pray that we will not be oblivious, Lord, that we pray that we will be sober, that we will be vigilant, that we will be awake, Lord, that we would love you deeply in our heart by being alive by your spirit, Lord. And Lord God Almighty, we pray, Lord. That we take serious our relationship with you because you are a good daddy, Lord. You have such a great heart, Lord. Lord, please forgive us when we, Lord, continue to forgive us when we fall, Lord. Please continue to lift us up by your spirit, Lord. But we pray we will never take advantage of you, Lord. We pray that we will never take advantage of you because we know you are forgiven. But plus, because we know you will encourage us. When we follow, Lord, we pray that we would never take advantage of that, but rather cause us to even love you even more and strive in obedience even more because we know your heart is sweet towards us. Jesus. Lord, we can't wait till we get to heaven to see what you see you, Lord. We can't wait till we get there and be with you forever, God. We just want to say, just want to say thank you. We love you. We need you. Please continue to use us. Please continue to guide us, Lord. And please continue to, to fill us up with your son, Lord God Almighty. That we may bear fruit that wells up into eternal life. 
Lord God, we love you so much. And we greet you with a holy kiss. Abba, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you so much. You are the one and only true God. The one only true God. And if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord, I thank you for leading me to this place. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have, everlasting, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious and holy and matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Brother and sister, congratulations. If you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life, okay? The Bible said whenever a sinner repents, heaven rejoices. Heaven is celebrating right now. They're having a party because you decided to come home and accept Jesus by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay? Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, okay? Being reborn again. Now get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, okay? Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. If something happened to you that tomorrow you're safe to enter the kingdom of heaven, you'll, you'll accept the Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Now get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the, name of the Holy Spirit. And pray that the Holy Spirit, who you receive once you accept him, will lead you to a gathering that is teaching the truth, okay? Because there's a lot of false doctrine out here, a lot of false teaching, because every church is not teaching the truth. And the Lord wants to spare you from that. So he want to the Holy Spirit will lead you to a place that is led by the Spirit that is teaching the truth. And he, number one, you know, he, get into your Bible and go to read, and, and the Holy Spirit will fill you up with the truth, and he will teach you how to have a personal relationship with Jesus and be intimate with Jesus. And that will help you know the truth, because the more truth you know, the easier it is to discern a lie. When you know the truth, can't nobody just lie to you, can't nobody lie to you, okay? And... As he leads you to a gathering, then you will hold other brothers and sisters accountable and y'all hold each other accountable as brothers and sisters in Christ. And as y'all strive together, the Holy Spirit makes y'all one in Christ according to truth because y'all all have a personal relationship with Jesus and y'all know him because y'all sheep. As sheep, y'all know his voice, okay? And um, and whether that's in the, the church, remember, that, and also the church, is a, the church is a people, not a building. So whether you whether you're in a house or a building, the church is happening because the people are gathering. So wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, it's okay. He can be trusted, okay? So, brothers and sisters, this is all that I have for you today. This is all I have for you today. I pray this is a blessing to you. I pray that it keep you. And I pray that it lead you into everlasting life. Okay? Brother and sister, if you miss me, you miss nothing. But if you miss Christ, you've lost, you've lost everything. Okay? Church, let us take serious the gospel and hold on for dear life. Okay? And brother and sister, if I don't say nothing else, nothing else, I always remember that Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us, loves us so, so much. Brothers and sisters, love you. See you next time. Goodbye. Well, brothers and sisters, I pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it keep you. And I pray that it drive you to full obedience to the gospel of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let us remember it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here because the end is.